The choices we make about our everyday lives directly affects the environment, and with a shift towards ethical consumerism, you consciously choose to spend your money on services and products that do more good to communities and the planet. Working with Wildlife Works over the last year and a half has been an eye-opening and life-changing experience to see the impact that this Red Plus project has had in Taita Taveta. In part two of this series, let's live out loud with the head of the Rangers team at Wildlife Works and check out the new line with its creative director. And welcome to Sheila Lives Out Loud. Thank you for joining me. As always, please click subscribe and hit notifications to catch up with uploads. We'd love to hear from you, so drop a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to share. That said, let's continue with the tour that we kicked off last week at Wildlife Works. Yeah, my name is Eric Sawe. I am uh, the head of security of Wildlife Works. At the same time, I'm honorary warden for the Kenya Wildlife Service, yeah, which gives me powers of arrest. At Wildlife Works, me and my team is purely conservation. And uh, when I talk of conservation, it means a lot. Uh, we are protecting trees, animals, and also the, the ecosystem at large. Uh, what we normally protect here is a small game and a big game and the uh, natural trees. We are not dealing with exotic trees here. The forest we are protecting here is Piwari uh, local forest and uh, the area that we, we operate is around 500,000 acres consisting of around 100 uh, five rangers who normally patrol within this uh, this area. Uh, the work for the rangers actually is paramount because they ensure uh, that the, the the conservancy, all the ranges are not encroached. Uh, people are not trespassing into the to this area to do illegal things like uh, after the destruction and the issue of the poaching within the area. So those are some of the work that the rangers normally do within, uh, the, uh, within the ecosystem here. The challenges that we face, especially within our project area, you know our project area constitutes of uh, 14 ranges and they are in the southern of Kenya, in Taita Tafeta. So some of the challenges actually we normally face is number one is poaching, and the poaching is categorized in uh, in many areas. Yeah, let me start with the, the commercial poaching. The commercial poaching normally is not entirely practiced by the locals. Yeah, it is done by the people from the north using sophisticated weapons like AK-47, the Chitris, Livos. Yeah, they have been found within the ecosystem and apprehended. Uh, we have another form of poaching that is a subsistence poaching. This one is practiced by the locals. Yeah, the local community, the people surrounding our project here. Uh, and they're doing it in uh, different forms. They're using snares, and at the same time, they're using dogs, hunting dogs at the daytime. Uh, and they're using torch and the own. It is fixed with a siren on top of that. So at night, they can just go to the bush uh, when they approach an animal, they put the silent on and the very powerful torch, so the animal becomes confused, so that is, they easily kill it because it doesn't move. Whether it is a giraffe, a buffalo, or anything else, it is killed, apart from elephants. Um, to go back a little bit about uh, the issue of uh, uh, the commercial poaching, the way it's conducted, you find these people, they have network. So that's where we have the challenges. Uh, most of the people practicing that, they are the people who have been uh, rearing animals 
like livestock within the area. So most of them, they know where the animals are, they know the area. So once they leave uh, herding, uh, they move or they graduate to poaching. So when they do the poaching, they know our movements, of course, and they have very nice network of the area because they've been there, of course. So that's one of the challenges that we, we faced when dealing with the issue of commercial poaching. And that one, uh, we came up with some alternatives. Uh, we identified the areas which were mostly affected. Um, we pressed so many teams. Yeah, that is from Wildlife Works and the Kenya Wildlife Service. Uh, we started moving together as a team, sharing information equitably. So that's how we came to completely finish the issue of commercial poaching within the area. So gunshots were everywhere. Talk of 2011, 2013, up to around 2016, this area was bad. There were gunshots everywhere. And uh, as I've said, most, most of it was, it was practiced by the people from the north. Yeah, so those are some of the challenges we faced. And number two, you know, we are protecting animals. Uh, we are protecting uh, animals and we are protecting uh, the forest. Uh, the forest serves as the fodder for wildlife. And uh, the area where we are is a wildlife corridor. This is, serves as a buffer zone. You find animals moving from a uh, Mukomansi ecosystem, which is in Tanzania, all the way to Savo West, coming to the to our project area, that is Kasigao Koldo. Then from here they move to Savo East. Like a time like now, uh, all the animals normally moves to Savo East, and they are supposed to be at the northern side of Ithumba those sites but they are finding some barriers you know uh, currently we have the SGL um, the SGL as it came you know uh, most of the animals are not moving freely regardless of uh, the underpasses which has, has been elected some underpasses of course uh, they were erected in areas whereby it's not a crossing point for these animals. So you find when they go to their normal route, they find that the, the road is crossed. But at the same time, uh, yeah, we have some, of course, we have some underpasses which are placed in the right area. And these animals, nowadays, they, have, they, are, they are finding their way of crossing that as Rory, Rory. So that's why you see a lot of accumulation of er elephants around. It is simply because they don't have that free movement to their, to their areas. And again, uh, people have been adapted to, to their areas. You can see that they have started some new constructions to their crossing points. So when the areas goes there, they find some new constructions. So when that one happens, they go back. When they go back, so that's why you find the issue of uh, human wildlife conflict within this area goes up. We need support. Uh, number one, we need funds. These local communities need a lot of education concerning wildlife, concerning the forest, concerning everything. So we need education. So sensitization programs in the, in the community level should be announced uh, to a level whereby each and every person surrounding the, the forest knows the importance of the forest. And then number two, the issue of mobility. Yeah, rangers who are protecting this forest need to move from one area to another. So I will be happy uh, when uh, all my teams uh, pace all camps will be having a vehicle, each team will be having a vehicle to his their movement within the, the project area. Uh, not all my, not all the best stations have the vehicle. So if we have that capacity of 
each and every team gets its own vehicle, now the issue of the movement becomes so easy. So we can cover all the areas within a very short time, uh, especially like now that we have uh, air coverage, we have some uh, gyrocopters around. So there are some harder sightings which can be made or done within a day and teams will not manage to get to those points at the, at the right time or at the expected time. So once we have mobility in all the base stations, it will ease our work. Prints from Wildlife Works are uniquely designed and screen printed by members of the neighbouring community. They find employment and build on their skills here, and with emphasis on sustainability, not a single thread or scrap of clothing goes to waste. So we've been taking an extensive tour of the Wildlife Works Sanctuary in Rukinga and there's one more person that I'd like us to chat with. She is an absolute gem. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know when you meet someone and you just know you're going to be friends for the rest of your life? Well, that's how I felt when I met Yugala Pretty, the creative director at Wildlife Works. Madam. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? We finally made it. You Here did. we are. You did. We'd had to delay it quite a few times because of these trying times we're in. Yeah, it's been a tough year for everybody, but we've lost opportunities, we've lost people, but we've also grown and learned. And how has that been for you? It's been interesting because I actually got stranded in the U.S. <laughs> I went there on my leave and then I was there for seven months trying to get home because this is my home now. Mm -hmm. and. When I came, we had to shut the factory, we had to shut the store. So through it all, we just persevered and everybody kept their salary. So I have to say Wildlife Works is, just went above and beyond to make sure everybody was taken care of even through all of this. Okay, so. and that is incredible to, to know because we're coming from a period where so many employees were sent home yep. because there was no work. Then there were others who were on half pay or yep. a fraction of what they were making. But you ensured that the communities that work and, and depend on wildlife works were still going despite. Yeah, they still had their salaries throughout the whole thing. All right, we've yeah. learned a little bit about the model for wildlife works from Kara and also George explained a little bit about what happens but from a creative perspective what do you do here? Well I originally was hired by Wildlife Works to um, design the in-house um, the collection for the in-house brand that we were going to market to for wholesale and then once I came to Rukinga I saw that my background is I'm a seamstress and um, I've been sewing since I was very young uh, my mom taught me, so I'm self-taught. So I just saw that instead of instead of being creative, I saw what really needed to happen in in order to get to that point was that the factory and our skill level really needed to be um, focused and build a team. So I <laughs> I decided on my own to do a job that I promised I never do, which which is basically production manager. Like let's just build a foundation. It took me five years, and then use this amazing team of people to do our own brand because in San Francisco where I um, where I was li been living for 30 years um, I had a clothing store and it was all local designers and so I was like let's use this yes we'll do production for other brands other sustainable brands but let's do our own brand mm -hmm. and I'm also creative then I could go back to doing that right so it was just the best of all of your skills yeah. all melding into one and, and for them one. when they're making yeah our uh, Wildlife Works collection, yeah. even the staff, they're like happier. They're like, yeah, we're doing this. Like, it's like, I don't know. It's We're not doing it for somebody else. We're actually doing it for, we're all working together. Yeah, they can see the common good. They can see the, the work. They know yeah. what it is they're in it 
before. We were at the printing station and it was beautiful to see some of the t-shirts being made and looking at the process and creatively, you know, there's so many t-shirts. I like the one with the zebras, then there's the cheetah one. Coming up with these prints because they're all very unique. What inspires you? Well, I kind of look at it like there's textile. So then, and then, so I look at them as little mini collections and there'll be the animals. <laughs> and then um, like the Rukinga collection. And then there's actually a series of Africa, like the one that Joseph's wearing right now. Like, so it's, I kind of think of it in that in groups and then I add to that. And then I think of like what, I also listen to the customer. Like we want more elephant prints. And I just, I don't know, it just, I actually dream of them. Yeah. I don't draw them out. We just like, we'll go, I work with um, Irene, who's one of my, uh, my assistant and she's also a good graphic designer so we'll look online and then it's just it's spontaneous completely spontaneous I don't put this like right. thinking yeah and now there's a new collection yes tell us a little bit about what's what's coming through well um, so this you know we, my original idea was to do limited edition screen printing like just do like new prints but then it kind of evolved to just being inspired, but if a customer likes this, we'll just have like, you know, several different prints. And so I don't like to use King or Kitenge because it's all made in China, mm -hmm. but you can be inspired by them. So this is all organic cotton grown in East Africa. And that, and then you can just change one color into it can, can have so many different um, facets if you just screen print different prints on them. Right. So, so, so everything that is, here is, if you get down to the Alchemist, you go to the Wildlife Works store and you pick up anything, it's cotton grown. In East Africa, yeah. Wow, that's really cool. So it's either organic or CMIA, which is cotton grown in Africa, Wonderful. which is small farmers. Okay. Yeah, so. Designing for both men and women, is yeah. there any challenge there or it's oh, all good? Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, first of all, the challenge is the only fabric you can get grown in East Africa that is sustainable is this 160 GSM jersey. So I have to design, or, so I have to work backwards. So I design around the fabric. Because right. that's, I'm committed to using sustainable fabric. So then from there, um, I, I kind of design from that. For the kids, men's, women's, it's kind of, the challenge is everybody has a different body type. Everybody, you know, like, you know, and once we started marketing in Kenya, yeah. instead of the US, it's also a different, you know, like, it's a different, <laughs> I mean, it's called the African passport. <laughs> I am a proud bearer of the same. <laughs> I don't need to tell you that. <laughs> but I want to do more unisex, to be honest. I want to do something that kind of doesn't, isn't so gender specific. Mm -hmm. But I will do the girly dresses because the girls, you know, they need some more attention than the boys do, but. Okay. Yeah. In summary, um, conscious consumerism. That is one of the things that I picked out when I logged on to the website yep. for Wildlife Works. Um, break it down for anybody who's watching and is thinking, okay, what does that mean? So in a nutshell, I remember you asked a question yesterday, like what can we do to yeah. help? Yeah. And without being so like in your face about it, like our, our t-shirts will be maybe three to four dollars more mm -hmm. than your average t-shirt, but then you feel better spending that extra amount of money because you know it's going back to the community because every dollar goes back into the community mm -hmm. and that's conscious consumerism perfect yeah thank you very much yuki well. um is there anything you would like to close with because for me i'm i'm pretty good with this i just love seeing you wear my the clothes <laughs> i design it makes me happy and you look happy wearing them and that just that's i can't ask for anything more it's happiness for me <laughs> that comes from knowing the members of my community who are better off because they've got a steady job, they've got an income coming in, their children are going to school. So wearing wildlife works for me is is happiness. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just the fashion, it's um something bigger. And once the brand grows and there and we can actually focus more on that, yeah. I can see the um just how happy the t the whole team is that we're doing this together and we're growing together. Right. Yeah. Doing things together, growing together. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I do hope you make the time to check out Wildlife Works. They are in... Um, Westlands. Yes, they are in Westlands at The Alchemist. Please pop in. It's a beautiful store and the people there are so lovely. And if you find yourself on Mombasa Road, you're heading to Costo, please stop by. 
They've got a beautiful sanctuary, the Ndobu House, I'm sure you've seen the videos and the clips. Beautiful place to stay and you can learn more about the work that Wildlife Works is doing and how you can plug in in your small capacity, in your big capacity. There's no limitation. Now, I look forward to catching up with you for yet another episode next week. Until then, subscribe, hit notifications and live out loud in all that you do. Bye for now.